You nailed it. <laughs> well, recent hernia surgery put me in a position of having to make a decision to either quit flying for a couple months or consider a trike. I looked at buying a trike, and there's a lot of options out there. I ended up building my own trike. I own a PAP paramotor, and PAP's rolling trike unit is probably about the best choice, but at the price point, I decided to try to build my own. So if you've considered building a trike, or maybe if you're a paramotor manufacturer and you have considered adding trikes to your line of products, here's the process of logic that I went through, some of my tips on building my trike, and now that it's been test flown, it's a pretty, pretty simple device. I kind of like it. So grab a cup of coffee. I watched countless videos on trikes, and I got to say that Pap's got it right for their particular product, but there's a lot of other people that have some pretty good ideas that either aren't incorporated into the Pap design. I kind of added and took the best from all of those ideas into what I built for my purposes. You know, your your opinion or your needs might differ, but I... Uh, I didn't just go about this trying to copy a trike. I went about it trying to indoctrinate or, or uh, in-draft as many of the better ideas from whatever sources. So as an example, somebody had sent me a copy of the Light Flyer trike plans. But I didn't, I didn't need to build this. This is a, a trike build for somebody that doesn't have access to a lot of tools. I own a milling machine and a lathe and some pretty sophisticated welding equipment. And that upscaled my, uh, my plans, I think. I also had to learn to work around what was available both on the internet and locally um, for materials. You know, there's a big difference between pipe and tubing. And pipe isn't typically a good uh, choice for tight interference fit parts. Incidentally, if you wanted to completely copy the PAP frame, there's just no way to source the various sizes of titanium tubing that this thing's made of in the United States at a reasonable price point. If I had to guess, I counted at least eight different sizes of titanium tubing, and they're just simply not available at any price within the United States. So let's consider some of the the trikes that influenced what I build. If you have ever seen any of Chris Santa Croce's Project Airtime flights, you know they 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 used a wheelchair, um, I think, to build that trike that they get people in the air with. Uh, there's a guy that posts in the UK. His name is Jerry's DIY. I think he's Irish, and he built a trike out of a wheelchair that he flies around. His channel centers mostly around burning used motor oil in his garage, but uh, there's that one as well. The Flyke, which is a obsolete offering from Fresh Breeze, uh, influenced pretty heavily into my design, although I didn't like the bicycle um, chain drive system because it was extra weight that I certainly didn't need. I, I looked at the Air One design, another open-wheeled high or uh, center of gravity type machine, what I didn't like about the Air One design was their method of swing arm support prior to takeoff and the fact that it wasn't a true weight shift machine. I even considered for a moment Captain Kurt's uh, fly pod, and one of the big things from his design that made its way into my final iteration was the castering nose wheel. Uh, in order to caster like a shopping cart and self-steer any momentum to pull the front of the vehicle one way or the other, the the axle of the front wheel needs to be behind the gooseneck mount for the fork. In in his video about what most trikes have wrong, Miroslav talks about thrust line and it the tendency for designs are for the thrust line to be parallel to the ground, and that messes with wing layout. And he goes into pretty deep discussions about how the thrust line should be up above so that uh, thrust at initial takeoff is pointed above the wing so the wing can get a clear inflation at least initially and blast up through that that dirty thrust coming off of the prop but then he got into some discussions about how that affected geometry in the air and I don't think he's entirely correct about that so 
Although I did defer to his design idea a little bit, I've only probably got about a three or four degree upward blast of the thrust in my final design. I looked at the retracted trike, and one of the things I liked about the retracted trike was the way that the T-section, in other words, where the, the main axle carriage either bolts or welds up to the spar that runs out to the front tire. The problem with the retracted trike, in my opinion, for my design concept was it relied heavily on the way that the motor mounted to the trike for the strength. And the way that PAP does it, it more or less relies on the base of the paramotor itself, the, the foot launch unit. It relies on the strength of that base to help carry the load of that spar. And that's ultimately the design that I went with. However, I wanted to avoid this drop frame type arrangement. Um, I didn't really like the extra welds and getting the geometry right was going to be difficult. So after all of these and a few more uh, considerations, it came time to buy tires. And tires pretty much determined the direction that the design went. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to use 20 inch pneumatic bicycle tires. The problem that I had with them was uh, if you rob them off of a BMX bike or a child's bicycle is they all have 3 8 inch or metric equivalent axles. The, the problem that I had was cantilevering. You know, those are designed to be supported on both sides of the wheel with like a fork arrangement or the, the frame that encapsulates the wheel running and being bolted on both sides of the wheel. In the paramotor trike design, we got a cantilever them, and I didn't feel like 3 8 of an inch bolt size was going to be strong enough. Even if I used grade 8 bolts, which I ultimately did, I wanted at least a half inch bolt for the weight bearing on both of the wheels. Another option that was available was a 20 millimeter mountain bike hub, but to source those, I was going to spend $400 on tires. And I, I just didn't feel like it, that was warranted when there were other options available. I ended up buying a half-inch bore, uh, non-pneumatic tire in a 16-inch size, so it was a little bit smaller, which kept my, my center of gravity a little bit lower. From Tractor Supply, they were like $27 a piece. So let's revisit the topic of material selection and sourcing. I went to a local uh, welding supply shop here. They, they tend to service the ag industry. They, they do sprinkler repair and... They build equipment for uh, all the local farmers, and many of whom's property I fly over. And they pretty much had, had tubing limitations. So my buddy Philip suggested that uh, we go to a metal supply business in, in the greater Columbia area here in South Carolina. And they had a yard full of scrap, surplus, drops, and junked aluminum. And I was able to shop through that. And I picked up two key components. I picked up about a 12-foot section of... 60 61 inch and a half round pipe with an inside diameter of one inch and an outside diameter of exactly an inch and a half. I also picked up about a 12 foot section of 70 75, which is a little stouter um, alloy, and that became the bushing sections for my axles. And I didn't need 12 feet of it, but at the price, I mean, they sold it to us at scrap price, that became the material for the basic basis of the build. In my garage, I also had a bunch of uh, 4130 chromoly tube steel. Most of that was for aircraft um, part production for home-built airplanes. I built a couple of airframes. I welded up quite a few components for buddies of mine that have home-builts. So because of that, I had about a 40-inch section of 1.5-inch inside diameter uh, I think it's 042 or 048 chromoly tube steel. And that became the carrier for the T-section. So the, the main rear axle goes all the way through that thing, one solid piece axle. And then the front spar that runs out to the front inserts as far as we can get it into that T-section that I welded up. And then it's pinned in place so that it can't telescope in and out and it can't twist or torque if the wheel gets front wheel gets side-loaded badly it's it's very securely held within that pipe. I'm much better at welding 4130 chromoly tube steel than I am aluminum. That's why I made that choice. Plus two, the tube steel gives me a chassis to weld the other components on that the motor mounts to. So ultimately, the T arrangement on this trike is as simple as it gets. It's a 90 degree fit up. 
and uh, welded with two passes. It's filled with uh, ER70 S2, which is pretty much the standard for welding up uh, 4130 chrome molly tubing. So I've decided on a 52 inch axle, which will give me 54 inches between the centers of threads, which is just a little bit wider than the Papatrike. I'm gonna turn bushings out of this one inch, 18 foot long piece of aluminum. I'm gonna use roll pins to secure the axles in the end of the aluminum. I have to drill through the axle which is the bolt, the bushing, and the carrier, which is the other piece of aluminum, a hollow piece of aluminum. And then I'm gonna lock all three of them together with a roll pin driven down into that hole. So with Philip uh, recovering <clears throat> from having a broken foot from paramotoring, he hasn't been able to work. So I didn't have access to a water jet to, to cut out specific components even though i have drawings i ended up hacking them out well what i did was i drew up the drawings in fusion 360 i spec the drawings i made a one-to-one -one scale document i printed that out and that became the template that i used to mark up the steel i cut the steel out with my plasma cutter and it was rough i finished up the rough cuts with hand tools and with the milling machine and then i welded on the uh, the uh, capture device and unfortunately, I ran out of 4130 steel at that point, so I had to use a piece of stainless, and tapping that stainless and drilling that stainless was a challenge. It's tough stuff, the uh, stainless, but it'll last forever now. So it continues. The long-awaited motor mount bracket. It's going to mount on the axle here like this, and then the frame will clip in there, and the through bolt will be behind the uh, portion of the frame that it carries. So about those motor mounts, the higher that they were, the, the, the more inclined the rake of the spar that ran out to the front tire was. So I kind of had to do a little guesswork, and I did a couple mock-ups tying the motor up in the rafters and, and adjusting the angle. And initially I had that spar really long because I didn't want to commit to cutting it too short. And what I found was that angle needed to be a little bit less than the angle of the gooseneck at the front. And what that gave me was that ability, back to Miroslav's discussion about the thrust vector being above the wing, I settled on a 15 degree angle to the front of the paramotor as it mated to the spar. And I settled on about a 12 degree angle where the gooseneck tied into the very front. And with simple measuring tools, actually I have an app for my phone that measures angles relative to level gravity. I was able to put that entire component in the milling machine and cut that at 12 degrees, and I was able to mark out using Fusion 360 to map out those 15-degree motor mounts, and the rest of it fell into place. So here's the sweep back for the caster. 4130 tube steel, and it's welded up to an old bicycle front fork. I incorporated a little bit of a, an angle on the foot steering peg so that your feet wouldn't tend to slip off. They'd constantly be squeezed toward the middle just by the geometry of it. I added the spring returns to keep it steering close to center. And then I used the 3D printer to print out some dress plugs so everything's dressed. Now, uh, another thing that I didn't, didn't understand when I started building this after I had it all mocked up, I went to sit in the seat and I realized there was nothing supporting the seat because it's the, the, the pickup on the swing arms that draws the seat support straps tight and that gives you something to sit on. Well, when the swing arms are hanging down by your side, this is why the Air One trike has those swing arm extensions that reduce the weight shift. It's to make the seat. So you don't want a seat support while you're in the air, you want to be able to use the weight shift, but on the ground, you have to have something. So I had to mock up this little seat support and weld it onto the center of the frame. It's ugly, but it does the trick. I didn't know what to do for distance. When I first did it, I realized I didn't want it to interfere with the seat. So I, I strapped the seat 
arm, the swing arms up as tight as I could. And then I added this in there and I left about an inch and a half play underneath the seat so that when you come down and the wing stops making lift, the seat settles down onto this. When you taxi out, you're riding on this until the wing makes enough lift to tighten those swing arms and then it pulls you off of the seat and then you go flying. So that's pretty much the end of the build. I gotta get this thing in and out of the weather, get it stripped down and painted and primed, and then I gotta get good at flying it. Well, if you made it this far, congratulations. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'd like any more suggestions on how I could make this thing better, but I, like I said, I just need to get out and fly it. Here's some bonus footage of the taxi test, which was about eight minutes long, and my first takeoff. So here's longtime trike flyer James trying out my homemade trike. And it looks like he thinks that it would work with a wing. He says thumbs up.